friends, welcome to a new happy learning video. Today, we're going to get to know a system in our body, which without, it would be impossible to live. Today, we're going to get to know the excretory system. The excretory system is formed by the urinary system and by the sweat glands. But before we get to know these parts better, we need to know that the excretory system's most important mission is to expel waste substances from our bodies. When we feed, our organism benefits from nutrients and food. But at the same time, it also produces substances which are harmful for our health. And they need to be expelled, and so they don't make us ill. This is what the excretory system is in charge of. As we already know, the excretory system is made up of the urinary system, which produces and expels urine, and by the sweat glands, which produce sweat. Do you want to get to know them better? You do? Let's go! The urinary system is formed by the following organs. Kidneys, urethras, bladder, and urethra. The kidneys are in charge of filtering blood to eliminate waste substances which are in it. These harmful substances joined with water we drink form urine. The ureters are two tubes which come from the kidneys and take urine to the bladder. The bladder is a bag where urine is stored. When the bladder is very full, we feel like we need to go to the bathroom. And it's in this moment when we expel the urine through the urethra, which is the last part of the urinary system. The sweat glands regulate our body temperature as a principal function. And for this, they produce sweat. When it is very hot or we exercise, our body temperature increases and our organism produces sweat. So our body cools down and makes our body temperature decrease. But sweat doesn't only lower our body temperature. Being made up fundamentally from water and waste substances, it also has an excretory function. When we sweat, the sweat brings to exterior a lot of waste substances. Sweat glands are distributed all around our body. And sweat comes out through some very small holes in our skin. Called pores. Well, now we've got to know the excretory system better. But before I say goodbye, I want to tell you something very important that you need to know. As you've verified, water is fundamental for the excretory system. Without water, the kidneys, for example, wouldn't work. So now you know that we need to drink lots of water. It's the best drink for your body. Great! You've completed the video. Now continue the route with the reading card, the video game, and the activity. Today we're going to learn about the digestive system and digestion. So that our body can make the most of the food we eat, it must first transform itself into a simple substance called nutrients. These nutrients are then transported by our blood around our body to be used and converted into energy. This food transformation process is called digestion and is done in the digestive system. The digestive system is a very long tube through which the food travels and is made up of the following parts. The mouth, this is where the digestive journey begins. The teeth both chop and grind up the food we eat. Once it has been made into a ball, it is pushed down the food pipe to the pharynx. The pharynx is a cavity which shares the digestive system with the respiratory system. 
It is from the pharynx that the food goes to the esophagus. The esophagus is a soft muscular tube that moves food further down to the stomach. The stomach is a widening of the digestive tube. It creates a movement which allows food with a mixture of gastric fluids. Once this process has been done, it then travels to the small intestine. The small intestine is called small because of its width, not its length. It is actually a lot longer than the large intestine, measuring up to 7 meters in length, almost as wide as a football goal from post to post. Well, it is here, in the small intestine, where the food digestion journey ends. Now it is up to fluid processes by two glands, the liver and the pancreas, to finalize the transformation from foods to nutrients. Once the food is converted into nutrients, they then traverse the small intestine's walls and filter into our blood where they are then made good use of by all of our body cells. But what happens to the food that our body doesn't need? All that, such as fiber for example, is transferred into the large intestine. The large intestine is a thick tube which accumulates substances which our organism cannot digest and it is where water from these substances is absorbed. The substances then form fecal matter, or what we call poop, and it comes out of the anus. Ah, it sounds a little bit disgusting, but that's how our body works. Anyway friends, I hope you found the digestive system and digestion as interesting as I did. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. We're going to learn about the circulatory system of the human body. The main function of the circulatory system is to carry through the blood the nutrients to the cells of our body. It is formed by the heart, arteries and veins. And its proper functioning is essential for us to have good health. I have a curiosity. Do you know how much all of the arteries and veins would measure together, put in single file? They would measure 96,000 kilometers, which would be equivalent to almost two and a half laps of the earth. It's incredible, right? The heart has the main role in making sure that the blood travels around the body. With its 100 thousand pulsations per day, it ensures that blood circulates throughout our body, allowing it to distribute oxygen and nutrients into our cells. We're going to start a journey through the circulatory system, so we can understand it much better. The journey of blood begins in the heart. With the pulsations of the heart, the blood comes out through one of the greatest highways of the circulatory system, called the aorta. From that moment, blood flows through our body, through many veins. During this trip, the blood is delivering oxygen and nutrients to the cells through the capillaries. It reaches the neck, head and brain through one side. From there, the blood continues to flow into our arms, then through the aorta, around the thorax and abdomen and finally reaching both of our legs. As this trip is circular, that is to say it has no end, the blood starts the trip back to the heart to regain nutrients and oxygen. The blood that returns from the lower part of the body flows through the inferior vena cava. The one that returns from the arms and head travels through the superior vena cava. All that blood reaches the lungs, where it gets oxygenated and returns back to the heart. There, the journey starts again. The truth is that it is incredible that blood is permanently traveling inside our body, don't you think? Well, now you know a little bit more about the circulatory system. But before saying goodbye, we want to remind you that for our body to work well, we have to do a lot of physical exercise and have a balanced diet. You have to eat vegetables, fruit and fish, and reduce eating sugar and sweets as much as you can. And of course, spend less time sitting in front of the TV or the computer. So now you all know. Right, 
Now everyone, go to run and jump. Great! You've completed the video. Now continue the route with the reading card, the video game, and the activity. We're going to learn about the human musculoskeletal system. It's what lets us move around. The musculoskeletal system is made up of two systems, the muscular and skeletal systems. The muscular system is the active part of the musculoskeletal system. Muscles are between our bones and skin and they are joined to our bones through tendons. They are elastic organs that can be lengthened or shortened, causing some body part movements. Us humans have approximately 630 muscles. According to the movements that they make, we can differentiate voluntary and involuntary muscles. Voluntary muscles move only when we want them to. And involuntary muscles move without us realising, like our heart or stomach, that are always in movement. The skeletal system is made up of all bones and cartilage. The skeleton gives us our shape that differentiates us from other living things and allows us to walk, run or jump. Our body has 206 bones and each one of them has their own name. Some of them are skull that protects our brain, the spine that maintains us stable and upright. The jaw allows us to move our mouths to chew food. Ribs that protect our heart or lungs. And the femur, the longest bone in the human body and is found in our legs. Bones are joined with each other by joints. They are divided into three groups depending on their level of mobility. Immobile or fixed joints don't have any mobility, like the ones that join our skull. Semi-mobile joints do have some mobility, but not a lot, like vertebrae in our backs. Mobile joints have great mobility, like our elbow or knee. Now we've got to know a little more about our musculoskeletal system. Now, we need to do plenty of physical exercise to make it work brilliantly and maintain ourselves really healthy. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. We're going to learn all about the nervous system. We all know that humans have five senses. Sight, which is the ability to see through our eyes. Taste, which is what we use to enjoy different flavors. Smell, which allows us to smell the wonderful senses in flowers. Hearing, which we use to listen to our favorite music. And touch, which is how we feel tickles or soft caresses through our skin. Well, our nervous system is what receives all the information captured by these senses, interprets it and responds to each situation. The nervous system has special cells called neurons and it is divided into two parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of the skull and the spinal cord the skull is where the brain is located, as well as the cerebellum and the brain stem. The brain occupies the largest part of the skull and is in charge of controlling our memory, emotions and voluntary actions such as reading, writing or jumping. The cerebellum also coordinates our balance as well as our movements. It's because of the cerebellum that we are not constantly falling down. Thank you, cerebellum. The brain stem links the brain to the spinal cord and controls the automatic actions such as our heartbeat, 
or the blinking of our eye, which happens without us even realizing it. The spinal cord is another part of our central nervous system. It is within our spine and it almost looks like a highway connecting the brain to all the body's nerves. The spinal cord is responsible for all the reflexes, like when you touch something hot. We pull our hand away instinctively, without even thinking. The peripheral nervous system is a set of nerves which travels around our body and is divided into two major parts, sensory nerves and musculoskeletal system. The sensory nerves carry information received by the five senses to the brain. The musculoskeletal system transmits the brain's responses, allowing the muscles to perform. So, if we were to fall in the water, for example, the automatic system would send a message to our muscles, ordering us to swim and get out of the water. Thank goodness, because otherwise we would drown. Well, now you know about the nervous system. It's really interesting, isn't it? Great! You've completed the video. Now continue the route with the reading card, the video game, and the activity. We're going to learn about the female and male reproduction system. When we are born, there are a series of characteristics which clearly differentiate a woman from a man's body. These are the sexual organs. As we grow, our bodies change and it is easier to tell us apart from a girl and a boy. But when we're little, when we're still babies, it isn't so easy to tell the difference at a simple glance. Don't you think? So, let's learn a little bit more about both the female and the male reproduction system. The female reproduction system is made up of various organs, with a majority located inside the lady's interior. These organs are the ovaries, the fallopian tube, the uterus, the vagina and the vulva. The ovaries are a pair of tiny glands where the female sexual cell, known as the ova, is formed and then matures. This occurs during puberty, which is when the human being develops and we stop being children and become adults. The fallopian tube are two long narrow tubes connecting the ovaries with the uterus. The uterus is a hollow muscular organ where babies develop during pregnancy. The vagina is an elastic muscular tube connecting the uterus to the exterior and is also where the babies come out during birth. The vulva is the only external organ of the female reproduction system and it protects the entrance of the vagina. Well, now we all know about the female reproduction system, now let's look at the male one. The testicles, the vast difference the seminal vesicle, the penis and the uterus. The organs of the male reproduction system are in the interior as well as on the exterior of the man's body. The penis is an external muscular organ and is where the uterus is located. And the uterus is a tube which expulses both urine and semen onto the exterior. Just in case you didn't know, semen is a mixture of liquid seminal and sperm. The testicles are two organs found on the exterior of the body. During puberty, male sex organs, called testosterone, start to produce. The vast deference communicates the testicles with the urethra and is found within the body. The seminal vesicle produces a fluid called liquid seminal, which transports the sperm. Well, now you know the female and male reproduction systems, fundamental for human beings to reproduce. Next, we can learn more about reproduction in the video dedicated to that topic. Did you find it interesting? I hope so. Goodbye, friends. Búscanos. Y suscríbete al canal de YouTube de Happy Learning.